गुड आफ्टरनून मैं अम्बा हम उनका सिजा हॉस्पिटल्स की मायके देगी मैं अम्बा खरंदरी सिजा हॉस्पिटल्स ना सिंजा बासिंग बा फेसबुक लाइव प्रोग्राम एपिसोड नंबर सेवेंटी सेवेन सिदा लिंक भी रहेगा मैं अम्बा सरू याबी रहेगा मैं अम्बा हाँ वो क्या दा आई डॉक्टर जुबिंद्रा सिजा हॉस्पिटल्स की स्टाफ में ना मैं � मस्सी की टॉपिक से अपने थम्जरी से एंड ऑफ लाइफ केयर है भी एंड टू डिस्कस दिस टॉपिक वी हैव विथ अस डॉक्टर नंदन चौधरी वो इस एमडी इन पैलिएटिव मेडिसिन फ्रॉम एम्स न्यू दिल्ली एंड ही हैज जॉइन्ड अस एस अ फैकल्टी इन मेडिकल कॉलेज इन शिजा हॉस्पिटल्स एंड नाउ ही इज वर्किंग विथ अस वेलकम ट Dr. Nandan Chaudhary is uh, not from Manipur, he belongs to Nepal, but uh, he has taken Indian citizenship and uh, now he is settled in Manipur. So we are very happy to have you here in Manipur. Thank you, sir. And uh, thank you so much uh, for joining this program. Uh, he is uh, in a specialty called palliative medicine. Uh, I'll be speaking in English because uh, Dr. Nandan, uh, we will be discussing with him only in English. He is new here. So I'm hoping that uh, very quickly he will learn Manipuri language and uh, be proficient in speaking with the patients uh, in Manipuri. But until then, we'll be speaking in English. So uh, just to begin the discussion, you have chosen this uh, subject as palliative medicine, which uh, people have uh, usually, most commonly, people have not heard about it also properly. Yes. People don't know much about palliative medicine and what is palliative medicine, what is the use and uh, when uh, after MBBS when young doctors they try for post graduation they think of uh, subjects like if not a surgical field then they think of MD medicine, MD pediatrics, MD cardiology uh, like that, MD gastroenterology like that for a super specialization. But you went ahead with palliative medicine, which is very rare and hardly people know about this subject. Yes, what made you choose this subject? Can you just briefly tell us so that people will understand about yes, the subject as well? Yes, sir. Uh, so uh, even uh, sir, uh, even me also before uh, joining palliative medicine, I even I, I had no idea about palliative medicine. I had read something about palliative care in our. Uh, like uh, surgery books or medicine book, <coughs> like uh, some uh, some uh, some of the disease required palliative care. So, but I didn't knew that uh, there was a uh, whole uh, like uh, subject called palliative medicine or a uh, MD course called palliative medicine. So, uh, at AIMS, I got uh, opportunity to join palliative medicine. But before joining, I uh, did some research about uh, palliative medicine. So, this is the only specialty, sir, in which. Uh, patient uh, is taken care and also the family members they are being taken care and this is the only uh, specialty where we uh, take care of the patient who are being neglected so uh, what I'm trying to say is that some, there are so many uh, illnesses which has no uh, cure or which doesn't have any kind of uh, uh, like treatment options so this kind of patient they get neglected mm -hmm. so when I heard about this thing, that uh, uh, so I thought that uh, this kind of uh, specialty, I mean, we, we uh, India requires or the world requires palliative care physician to take care of this kind of uh, needy patient. So that's why I choose uh, palliative medicine, sir. Right. So that's uh, very nice of you, because uh, uh, the world statistics uh, now stands that people are living longer. Yes, sir and their uh, life expectancy is getting more and more so uh, because uh, acute illnesses and infections are being controlled by health uh, programs and health policies so there is no acute deaths due to severe infections like cholera diarrhea like that so but uh, and malaria even malaria and other things so pe people are growing older living longer and ultimately coming to a stage where they fall sick due to uh, some non-communicable diseases like uh, common examples is blood pressure, sugar, yes. 
and which will lead to uh, problems like stroke, kidney failure, heart failure and yes. such things. And since they are living longer, they develop uh, cancer. Yes. Uh, so number of cancer patients are also increasing and especially Northeast is a hub of uh, cancer patients. Yes. Yes. So this is uh, the reason why such a care of uh, this nature, palliative care is required. So today's topic is uh, end of life care, which is, uh, as I understand, a very major portion in the different aspects of uh, palliative care that is given to patients. So end of life care is uh, very important to feel. Uh, what exactly this is uh, the uh, end of life care, so that pe people who are listening can understand what is meant by this? Because most of the time people are knowing about treatment for their diseases, heart failure treatment for that, or heart transplant, kidney transplant, when the disease is uh, uh, chronic, incurable. So these are the things they know. But then what is end of life care? So just briefly, can you explain? Yes, sir. So uh, end of life, as the term already is saying that uh, when we are approaching the end of life, it's a part of care where patient who has uh, like terminally who are terminally ill or someone whose treatment is not possible suppose uh, we take an example of uh, any cancer which has uh, progressed to stage 4 so at stage 4 there are very limited option of treatment like uh, someone they might require only palliative chemotherapy or palliative surgery so this kind of uh, treatment is not curative uh, treatment so we know that the patient patient's illness will progress and the patient will die and in like maybe in a month or two months or six months or maybe one year. So the part of care that uh, in this kind of patient whose life is limited to less than a year is called end of life care. Hmm. So why do we have to discuss uh, about uh, end of life care? Because it's a part of care where we try to plan for their end so that patient get a very dignified good death. And also if you look at the Recent data, I think, uh, sir, uh, in 2015, there was a data regarding the quality of death in India, where India ranked an, around 67 out of 80. So the quality of death in India is very uh, poor. So I think uh, this kind of care, uh, if this kind of care is approached properly in this kind of patient, the quality of death will improve and people will have a very good death. So that is, I think, very important. Sir. Yeah, interesting term that you use when you say uh, good death because yes, sir. death to a <coughs> sorry death to everybody is uh, not good. They don't yes, want sir. to hear about death. Yes, sir. they don't want to discuss about. It. Nobody discusses death, and uh, nobody discusses about uh, uh, the nitty gritties of death. So, what is the the quality qualification of a good death that you are saying you say that uh, if you give this care the death will be good what is the qualification of a good death yes. when a person dies yes, sir. so good death means something that uh, like uh, right now like just, I, I just said sir that uh, the quality of death in India is very bad uh, we can discuss why the quality of death is uh, in India is bad because People, they don't have any uh, knowledge about uh, palliative care. So mm -hmm. when they don't have knowledge about palliative care, what is a general uh, understanding of the physician in India right now is that whenever they see the patient, uh, they think that uh, the patient is suffering from some illness. So they try to treat that illness. And when they try to treat that illness, they, uh, the patient uh, tend to end up in a very uh, uh, you know, futile kind of uh, treatment. So uh, suppose some patient is uh, like uh, terminally ill, and patient is uh, like progressing, his illness is progressing. So they, they will end up in ICU. And, uh, and even the patient know that uh, the, the, uh, the condition of the patient will not improve even after going to that ICU also. But they don't have any option because that is what we have been taught. That is what is the uh, legal uh, thing that we go through. System, that is how system works. Because you have to treat, you have to treat. But we know that this is not treatable. So what happens is the patient who does not require ICU care sometime, they end up in ICU, they end up in uh, very uh, uh, like uh, you know going into ventilator, going into uh, into tracheal tubes. So so what I'm trying to tell you, tell is that sir how to make good death is that 
so we are discussing about end of life so if uh, so we know that someone is uh, end of life means they have limited time like one month or six months so uh, we as a palliative care physician we try to uh, take up this patient and try to understand and make the patient understand that uh, you have limited time so once the patient understand that they have six months of time and they know that their illness is not going to get cured so they will understand when and where to uh, get treatment how to get treatment what kind of treatment is best for them so they have a choice they have the autonomy mm. so they know what is good for them mm. so they'll decide what is good for them where to take care uh, of their illness what kind of uh, treatment is best for them so uh, good death means uh, when they know what kind of care is best for them what uh, care is uh, uh, what choices they can control like they want to have uh, like uh, aggressive treatment or not or where they want to get treatment suppose uh, some, someone uh, don't want to die at uh, hospital sir so mm. they have a choice that they can die at home mm. so some many people they want to uh, die with their loved ones so that uh, they uh, because the whole life they have been living very happily and uh, at the end if they start suffering that's not a good death sir mm-hmm. so we have to give them a dignified death mm-hmm. dignified death means uh, when they have a uh, time to say goodbye to their loved ones mm-hmm. they have time to like uh, fulfill all their wishes mm-hmm. so when they know that they have one month time left or uh, few days time left so they will fulfill all these uh, unfilled uh, like uh, things mm-hmm. they, they might be uh, wanting to just to visit someone or mm-hmm. talk to someone So this kind of small things makes a lot of difference uh, in their life, mm-hmm. so that they get a dignified uh, de- death. So this is what we call good death, and also uh, they have a choices uh, to uh, uh, control over their uh, like uh, symptoms, sir. So because at uh, end of life, sir, they have so much of symptoms. Like uh, if you look at the studies, sir, almost uh, 50 to 60 percent of the patient at uh, end of life they tend to suffer uh, from uh severe pain pain yes yes sir they tend to suffer from severe pain because of their illness also they have they tend to suffer from uh like breathlessness mm-hmm. breathlessness they have difficulty in breathing mm-hmm. so that is also there so uh this kind of patient they have the choice to take uh, like uh, get relieved from this kind of symptoms like pain uh, constipation or breathing difficulty or uh, there are many symptoms sir that has to be controlled so so that they get a proper uh, death sir yes yes, yes sir yes sir. as a doctor myself and as a surgeon i have uh, come across uh, many deaths uh, yes sir in, in during the course of my uh, career during the medical uh, student life uh, onwards yes sir from then onwards uh, we have come across uh, deaths and uh, what we practically see is that uh, the patients they suffer a lot Yes, sir. all so many things uh, they suffer. They suffer pain. They suffer anxiety. They suffer from fear, and uh, some of them I can still remember with. Uh, uh, it is ingrained in their memory how their eyes look. So, uh, you know, at the time of death, they are uh, so much uh, uh, afraid and uh, seeking yes, help, sir. and uh, yes, they are. asking for something to be done so that they yes. do not die but uh, we could not do anything then still the yes. patient dies so i think uh, end of life care would uh, take uh, into account all those things and make the patient feel at uh, ease and at calm so and also since uh, this part of this uh, uh, the, the care was not uh, given as a universal training to all doctors and nurses uh we are uh, we were not trained to give the proper medications uh, to uh to stop uh, these uh, things uh, like for instance uh, when the person is dying there might be a lot of secretions from the mouth and uh, yes. uh, there will yes. be a lot of uh, very uh, loud sounds coming from yes. the mouth and there is what we call death rattle death rattle exactly yes. so the death rattle may happen and then those uh, staying nearby they will be very much disturbed yes sir. because uh, you want to somehow help the patient to stop from having that yes, uh, those sounds and making sounds yes, we know that as a professional we know the patient is going to die within few minutes uh, yes, uh, the patient is going to go but making all those uh, disturbing sounds and the patient party around 
this is a very difficult uh, situation. But yes, sir. If we know the correct medicines and uh, proper medication, we can stop that. All yes, that, sir. that. Definitely. Yes, I Definitely. think uh, yes, that sir. will be a uh, good uh, prospect for uh, end of life care, so that patient appears calm. Yes, that, sir. Uh, in that uh, dire situation and still accepts. Uh, uh, it's very traumatic, sir. Uh, even at uh, end of life. Yeah. For the loved ones who see the patient, uh, I mean, dying. Yes, yes. I mean, uh, they and throughout their life they have enjoyed everything. Yes. They have done everything uh, yeah. good, but uh, they have the right to die peacefully, sir. Right. And uh, we, as a physician, are uh, responsible to give them the yes. peaceful death, yes. not to suffer them. I mean, uh, there are medicines, sir, uh, to make them, I mean, right. calm them. So, and it's very traumatic to see the loved ones. Uh, I mean, their loved ones dying in a very uh, bad way and uh, and uh, palliative care in palliative care sir we try to take care of all those symptoms so that uh, the patient uh, die peacefully sir. Right. Yes, sir. That's uh, uh, very nice. So patients uh, uh, especially in, the, in a hospital setting if the patient is about to die then you can take over and uh, do all those things uh, which are necessary to keep him calm. That's what you're yes, saying. Sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. So that will be a great help uh, to the patient as well as uh, to the family members yes, who are uh, there with the patient. Yeah. So and uh, now, uh, as uh, human beings, when we are growing from childhood, we are come growing, and by some age, maybe uh, slightly after puberty or just uh, after that. We learn, we come to know that death is a reality yes, for sir. humans and we know that uh, death is going to happen. Most of us know that yes. death is going to happen and we are not going to uh, be alive, eternal. So, so I think uh, uh, we all know that we are going to die yes, and that is not the fear. Basically, death is not a fear but how we die and uh, in the situation of uh, uh, that uh, uh, nearing death, uh, our the the level of suffering that we are going to endure, the level of problems that we are going to face, that is very frightful to yes, all sir. of us. I think. So, how do you, uh, in your uh, this thing training as well as in your experience, how do you think patients they accept uh, death as a uh, natural way or they deny this uh, phenomenon of death? Sir, even. Uh when uh, we as a physician also when we uh, like uh, we have we had uh, webinars or conference or some kind of gathering even there also we were talking about death i mean how do you want to die even for us also it's very <laughs> sometimes it's very traumatic to think about death this is something that uh, people they don't discuss sir yes. and i think uh, and once uh, sir we started discussing about death we felt uh, i mean uh, I mean, we, don't, we didn't feel that scared. I mean, once we started uh, talking, thinking about in that way, in a different way that, uh, that uh, yeah, suppose I have to, I know that I have to die. Someday I have to die with some illness. But what, what if I get a chance, uh, uh, like, um, to know, I mean, if I have a time, so, uh, so I, I will be prepared mm -hmm. how to die, where to die, all these things. But uh, when I talk to sir, patients and all, and uh, so it's kind of uh, traumatic only, sir, uh, to talk about all these things also. Most of the time, sir, uh, even the caregivers, uh, they don't want to tell the uh, patient who is suffering mm -hmm. that, uh, uh, don't tell the patient that uh, the patient is going to die. Yes, yes, yes. So is, it makes a very, uh, like, a, it's kind of a barrier yes. for us also to, I mean, prepare them for their, uh, for their death. Because until unless I don't tell them that uh, they have this much of time, they won't be prepared. Mm. So this kind of discussion is a little bit sir, uh, difficult sometimes. Mm. But uh, we try to uh, make the patient party also understand that um, uh, it's good if the patient knows. They will, uh, they will be uh, devastated by the news for some time. Anyone, sir, even me also, if I am going to die, I'll, I, will, I will be devastated for some time. That, uh, I'm going to die, but at least I'll know what is how much time do I have and uh, how to die and, and like I'll be prepared, sir. Mm -hmm. So there will be all I, 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 even I can finish all the unfulfilled uh, business and all. Right, yes, sir. Right. So uh, even now during this uh, discussion that we are having, I think uh, viewers uh, they would be finding it difficult uh, 
to listen to this topic on yes, Jack sir. because I think so. this is very new and uh, yes, we are uh, doing this uh, uh, for the first time on, on a media like this. So yes, it will be difficult for them to hear and uh, discuss yes, about. Sir. But personally what I feel is that uh, those who are discussing about death yes, and uh, accept uh, death as a reality yes, uh, in their daily experience and daily life, yes, they live their life better and more yes, fulfilled. Sir. Yes, sir. Exactly. So I yes, uh, have heard uh, other uh, people, experienced people and all, many uh, spiritual leaders also saying the same thing yes, and which practically I also experienced that uh, if we are talking about death and discussing death, then we have a more fulfilled life and uh, yes, good experience because then we are then aware of the time that we have to do our things. Yes, uh, rather than wasting it on unnecessary thoughts and unnecessary activities which yes, will lead away from our uh, intention of living. Yes, sir. So that is right. For example, we had for first time, we had a, a this death cafe, a discussion on death cafe. We had a collection of about uh, some 20 of us collected in, in a room and uh, uh, Dr. Suresh Kumar, who was uh, our mentor in palliative medicine from Kerala, he was there and uh, he conducted the program. And each of one us were discussing how we want to die and what would be the yes. way we would like to die. And it was for the first time. And many of the people who were there, they were shocked that yes. uh, we, it is uh, going to discuss about our own death and how we want to die. Because nobody wants to die. Yes. So, but. After the program, what we felt was that uh, it made us very light. Yes, sir. We made us feel very light and we were uh, happy that the discussion happened. Yes, and there was a lot of awareness uh, of uh, the, uh, the death and it, the, the, the phenomenon of death became less frightful yes, sir. Uh, from then on. So I think uh, it is good to do that. Yes, if there is any comment or question from anybody, we will take it. Uh, Birdman says, can a patient recover from palliative care? Reason behind it's... Uh, yeah, so he is asking whether palliative care can be given so that patient recovers. So, uh, so uh, I think uh, the I think the understanding uh, about palliative care, I think you have different understanding. So palliative care is not uh, 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 illness or something like that. So you can't uh, uh, like uh, you can't say that patient can recover from palliative care or not. Palliative care is a part of care where uh, we care for someone who is uh, uh, who doesn't have uh, uh, like a curative intent. Someone. So there are uh, different categories of patient also. Sometimes we treat uh, cancer patient also, and uh, palliative care is required for cancer patient also when they are diagnosed at stage one also. So but at the stage one the patient. Uh, the state, uh, the cancer is curable that time. So palliative care is required that time also, and because they have symptom at stage one also, and uh, palliative care is required for like supportive care to manage their symptom. So that time also palliative care is required. But the the the, the way the, you are asking question is that uh, someone who is undergoing palliative care can they recover from that or not? Yes. So yeah, it depends on the stage of the patient. So someone who is at stage one, they can recover. I mean, they can become no normal. Uh, after proper treatment, but someone who is at stage four, or their illness is progressing, or they end up in end of life, so they have a limited time, like uh, one year or six months. Uh, but that time, I think, uh, it's not possible to for them to recover, uh, to or to become a normal like a uh, normal person. Right. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, so to Birdman, uh, palliative care is usually. Uh, given to patients who are not going to recover from their disease and it is going to be a lifelong uh, disease will be there for lifelong until death but they may not suffer because of palliative care they may not suffer the disease is there for example there are joint pains severe joint pains uh, in osteoarthritis and uh, patient may have severe pain the osteoarthritis as a disease is not going to recover yes sir uh, it can be controlled to some extent by medicines, but it will not be 100% uh, coming back to normal. But 
if palliative care is involved then their suffering of pain and other problems can be reduced by proper medication so yes. i think uh, uh, that is uh, the thing that we are targeting that uh, uh, as a human being uh, we should not uh, suffer whatever the disease we are uh, having so that is the target of uh, palliative care any other comment Good afternoon, doctor. How does define end of life and general people are not known very well about palliative medicine? Please brief about it and uh, precautionary measures from it. How does it spread it and its symptoms? Yeah. So again, it, uh, uh, Mr. Roman is a regular listener of our program and asked this question very nicely. So you have already spoken about uh, what is uh, end of life and palliative care, but uh, just uh, again, once again, so that uh, uh, Mr. Roman can understand it better so yeah so uh, so palliative uh, care I'll just uh, explain what is palliative care first uh, so palliative care is it's like a uh, it's like an approach which uh, improves the quality of life of someone who has who is suffering from life limiting illness so life limiting illness means uh, your illness is not going to be cured there are some illnesses which are not curable so let's take an example of uh, cancer so stage one is, is curable, but uh, stage four, stay sometimes stage three also, uh, sometimes it's not curable. So this kind of uh, patient they require palliative care, and uh, and it's a it's a kind of a uh, part of a medicine where we not only uh, care for the patient but also we care for their caregivers, and we try to uh, like uh, mm, care of, take care of the patient in a holistic way, like uh, taking care of the patient's symptoms also taking care of their uh, social problems or their psychological problem or their spiritual problem because whenever the patient is suffering from a very life limiting illness they tend to suffer from all these kind of things even if they have pain also their pain is influenced by their social problems their uh, spiritual problems or their psychological problems so we have to take care of this kind of patient in a holistic way and coming to end of life care end of life care uh, it's a part of uh, palliative care only. So, uh, as I explained earlier, that palliative care starts as soon as the patient is diagnosed with life-limiting illness. So, suppose someone is uh, diagnosed with uh, uh, like uh, cancer, then uh, palliative care will start uh, with with the ongoing curative treatment. Suppose someone is undergoing uh, chemotherapy or uh, surgery for the cancer. At the same time, palliative care also will start. But at, a, at some time, the patient disease, disease will progress to stage 4. Let's, let's say that the patient has progressed to stage 4. Now we know that the patient's condition will progress more and more. It will not come back to normal. It will keep progressing. But that time, we know that the patient's uh, life is limited. It will be limited to a few months or a year. So that the duration that is left is end of life. And the care that we are giving is end of life care. So now I think you understand what is uh, palliative care and end of life care. Yes, yes, yes. yes thank you. So those diseases, uh, it may be cancer or it may be other it diseases be like uh, even uh, patients uh, with uh, spinal injury who are bedridden, yes, completely bedridden, cannot move around. We are yes, taking sir. care of patients who are uh, um, almost 15, 16 years yes, always sir. in bed. Yes, sir. So they are in bed, yes. yes so we are taking care of them. So that is palliative care. Yes, sir. Yeah. So there are many uh, illnesses, uh, just take an example. So uh, uh, let's take an example of uh, chronic kidney disease or uh, yes, yes. someone who is suffering from renal disease. So uh, what happens sir, suppose some, let's take an example of a diabetic patient. So the complication of diabetes uh, after a longer com uh, long term complications sir, is like uh, kidney renal failure. kidney failure. Yes. So they will uh, end up in end stage renal disease. Yes. So what will happen is that uh, they will end up in going hospital like multiple times dialysis. maybe dialysis for dialysis and mm -hmm. with dialysis uh, they'll have multiple infection also mm -hmm. so the quality of life will like deteriorate uh, i mean every uh, like uh, like it will keep progressing their illness will keep progressing yes, the quality yes. of life will be very bad they will be bed bound or wheelchair bound yes, they will not be moving around yes yes sir There's so many tubes in their in their body all the time yes yes sir quality so they have so much of suffering yeah so they have a lot of uh, problems like suppose someone who is a uh, uh, like an earning member of the family mm. and uh, they are bed bound yes. and they have to go to hospital multiple times yes. and they don't have any idea what to do now yes. I mean the physician they will tell you have to go for dialysis mm. but there has, there has to be some stoppage mm. to this 
there has to be some kind of uh, care that can make his life uh, you know from miserable to very good yes, yes. so that uh, he will have a peace of mind because we know that the patient is going to die they have a, uh, like a limited uh, num- uh, amount of time left yes. so that uh, the patient's quality of life will improve and they will die peacefully sir yes, yes. So that that is one example and there are multiple examples Mm-hmm. Uh, like a patient that you, you said sir like a stroke patient so they are bed bound for longer times and they require only palliative care and suppose some patient with encephalitis or like meningitis post meningitis or post encephalitis there are many uh, childhood il- illness also yes. which require only palliative care because there is no curative treatment uh, options uh, available yes, yes. yes sir right any next comment Ranita Maibam end of life care is a very important part i also feel that great initiative sir really we all need to understand this journey uh, sister ranita maibam is uh, our palliative care nurse uh, yes. who is uh, taking yes. uh, she was uh, had uh, been awarded by nightingale award for the best yes. nurse also yes. and she is doing palliative care in uh, her, her uh, health and wellness center so she is saying that it is very important and we should uh, Uh, all know about this uh, uh, aspect of uh, life thank you sister anita and please uh, continue with your very good work we are all very impressed with your work even today i was talking about uh, your work to palium india uh, discussion in the morning and uh, we are very happy with your work please continue we agree with you and that is why we kept this program so that people can hear this and start discussing about uh, things like this about end of life care and other things yes any other comment sandy rim says well said sir and yes we healthcare team members really need to understand in depth and do practically as well palliative care is something a very special care which both the healthcare team and the family members needs lots of understanding yes very true very true sandy says yes, very nicely yes, uh, this is true so uh, just like uh, someone uh, sir someone sir someone who comes to this world there is a care for them like pediatrics is a department yes so suppose there should be a like a special department for dying also right for right. birth also there is special care yes yes, yes for yes. dying also there should be a special care can recall this take care of the mother the yes, pediatrician sir. take care of the uh, yes, child newborn yes newborn, sir yeah. so we have to like we have to not neglect the patient who is dying sir yes. most of the time mm, most of the hospitals and most of the healthcare institutions when they feel that uh, nothing much can be done to the patient yes, they sir. always ask the patient party yes, and the family members uh, we uh, we will not be able to do much more yes, you have the choice to take him or her home yes sir. they say that and uh, when the patient and family they are very much uh, troubled they are yes, sir. too much they, because is, they don't know what to do at home yes sir exactly the doctor will say what we don't have anything to do here Yes, so uh, this is going to be a real problem for them yes, and sir. that is where i think uh, uh, that is where our care is lost sir yeah 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 so we have to continue till their death sir yes yes so yes. that is something because they feel very helpless sir when we say that there is no uh, like treatment option available they feel very helpless even we know that there is not much option uh, av- available as uh, like a medical uh, like a i think sir yeah. but even a sp- simple touch or simple presence of our presence sir that makes a lot of difference right when they are dying sir they feel very uh, i mean supported yeah. during this time sir i think uh, we have to uh, i think this is very important sir so uh, uh, let me ask you one question about uh, aims uh, so you yes. have been trained in aims for in palliative care and that sense mm-hmm. and it is a three year course uh, yes, uh, yes for uh, specialization yes. so how is the patients over there in the aims hospital there how do you as a palliative care physician how do you intervene at what time you intervene for the patients so that the public can know yes, what sir. roles you have and uh, how you are referred by other doctors and how you as a uh, palliative care member how do you so what are the functions there that you do this is let us know sir at aims uh, we have a uh, like a six days uh, opd sir from morning to evening and we have a ward also 
uh, yeah. for admission. Uh, we have yeah, information for, for the information of the viewers, uh, Shija Hospitals also started OPD yes. in palliative uh, care, and we yes. also have a ward. We have launched our ward uh, yes. uh, also, and we have ward to keep uh, palliative medicine patients also. So that is for information. Yes, please go ahead. Sir, uh, so we have ward and we have OPD. So most of the patient, uh, because our department is located in uh, the cancer building, yeah. uh -huh. so most of the referrals are uh, from cancer department, cancer patient only. Yeah. So anyone uh, who requires like symptom management. So sup suppose uh, someone is uh, like undergoing chemotherapy or uh, radiotherapy or surgery. So they tend to suffer from symptoms, sir. So yes. during the curative treatment, they suffer from some symptoms. So for the symptom management, they tend to refer to our clinic, mm -hmm. and also. Uh, from other departments also, suppose from nephrology or neurology or geriatric medicine or pulmonary medicine department, yeah. whenever there is someone who is like uh, end of life, they refer us for uh, end of life care uh, consultation or uh, end of life care admission also. And also we started our services in, uh, in uh, emergency medicine department also there. Okay, even yes. in emergency you can? Yes sir, yes. emergency also. We, we used to get posted uh, there for uh, uh, nearly two months sir. Mm -hmm. So we, we started palliative care there also because uh, AMCJ, sir, um, like a, um, most of the patient uh, when they are not, they don't have uh, like further treatment, they are referred to AMC. Uh -huh. So when they come to AMC, sir, uh, even there also we don't have so much of option because they are terminally ill sir. Yes. So we get a lot of, uh, once we started palliative care there sir uh, and the doctors and the physicians they started knowing that there is a department and we started uh, making like palliative care awareness uh, among all the physicians then they had a very uh, kind of a relief sir, they got a relief that because they knew that uh, this kind of patient has to be sent back to the home. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now now they know that there is someone to take care, yes, yes, yes. there is a department, there is a uh, uh, different department only to take yeah. care of this kind of patient. So this kind of patient, they were being referred to us. Okay. Yes, sir. So for admission also, for uh, consultation also, everything, sir. Because even suppose sometimes we don't have to admit them, but we have to send them back to the home. But what happens is that they uh, when go home and they t t tend to suffer till their death. Yes. What we do is we make a care plan. Okay. Care plan, and we try to uh, make the patients uh, caregivers. And relatives, yeah. Yes, sir. They, we try to train them mm -hmm. how they can be trained at uh, uh, how they can care their uh, I mean, patient at their home only. Yes, yes. And we prescribe anticipatory medicine. What can how can uh, that they give when when to give which kind of medicine so that the patient uh, does not suffer okay. at home, sir. So these were the things we do should do, sir. Right. So uh, another aspect of end of life care. You, so you are talking about that psychological uh, aspect of the yes, person uh, coming to. Uh, during his death. So, uh, what exactly do you discuss with them? How do you discuss with them? What What do you tell them? Like, uh, it's you know, as a doctor myself, it's I know it is very difficult to tell the patient that uh, you are going to die. Yes, sir. But uh, then uh, you are saying that uh, we, it, it is uh, good to tell them and also. Yes, uh, so, how do you do that uh, without making them feel bad about it? Yes, sir. What is the? Uh, so there, there is a we do it. A, we are trained, sir, uh, to talk about this uh, difficult thing, sir. Right. So this is a very bad news, sir. Yes. And we have to, we know that we have to tell the bra bad so news. This is called uh, breaking the bad news. Breaking the bad news, yes, sir, exactly. Yeah, this is the term. Yeah. Yes, sir. So I still remember one thing, sir. I, yeah. I shouldn't be discussing this, but uh, there was one situation where uh, uh, one patient came to me. He was very angry huh. with some other doctor. Was very, I asked him why are you very angry, I mean, he told me that uh, there was some doctor who told me that I have cancer, mm -hmm. he was very angry, he was very angry at that doctor that he was telling me that I will file a case against him. Mm -hmm. I told him, uh, I mean sir, uh, I know that we are not trained how to deal with this kind of uh, bad news, but when I saw this patient and his angerness, I thought that uh, this kind of uh, news has to be given in a very uh, like a step voice manner yes, because yes, sometimes yes. they don't want to hear sir. Yes, yes, and they don't want to hear directly also. Correct. I still remember my father uh, was uh, my my own story sir. My father he was uh, um, once he was uh, having some oral problem, so uh, someone told him that uh, we have cancer. 
and he got very angry and he uh, like uh, he, he tore all the papers and he threw every paper and he came back home i can't have this so that gives me a uh, understanding that this this kind of things has to be dealt in a different way mm. so we used to get a uh, consultation to break bad news also at aims okay so somebody is uh, very yes, bad and going to die they will call you to talk to the patient about yes, their situation yes sir because uh, this is a different so kind of approach yeah, sir okay so because some because patient you don't want to know how to do it yes sir so we try to uh, understand their understanding what is their understanding whether they want to know about their illness or not sometimes they don't want to know sir mm-hmm. so we try not to disclose so uh, we try in a step wise manner whether they want to know we'll know that they want to know or not mm-hmm. so whether they want to know we'll try to tell them in a nicer way Yeah. and we try to Whether they are ready to accept, ready any, to accept any, any, any any information yes sir they are ready to accept about yes, prepare sir. them right yes sir to prepare them sir yes, mm-hmm. yes sir. yeah that's very interesting because uh, most of the time the doctors who are trained up to the level of mbbs they do not go through a proper training in this regard yes, yes sir but they are facing uh, deaths in the ward and icus yes, and everything yes, and uh, i think uh, sometimes maybe more many learn from their own experience but uh, many many a time uh, young doctors may not be handling it uh, properly yes, taking sir. care of the emotional aspects, aspects of the yes, patient uh, relatives and everybody yes, so that could be a uh, reason for flare up of situation and then uh, patient and patient party becoming yes, violent and other things any other comment or discuss Shamila Tharoijam is saying, with the increasing aging population in Manipur too, can a geriatric medicine physician and palliative care physician work hand in hand in coming years? Yeah. Yes, sir. I think uh, this is a very good question, sir. I think we have to. Uh, there is um, not much uh, geriatric medicine uh, physician also in India. Yes. Sir. I think that is also very much required, sir. Yes. Because geriatric uh, population, which consists of more than 60 years uh, age group people, uh-huh. there. approach and care is totally different sir mm-hmm. they 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 also tend to suffer in a different way mm-hmm. and this kind of patient uh, requires a special care that why that's that's why they have a geriatric medicine uh, even at aims also we were posted uh, there for uh, geriatric medicine department also because the approach is similar sir yes. and uh, and uh, most of the geriatric uh, po- pa- patient also they uh, they 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 have sufferings like uh, dementia alzheimers parkinsons yes. all these kind of disease which which can't be cured right so their approach of uh, treatment is different sir so i think uh, we have to work together sir uh, and deal with this kind of patient yes. also very good suggestion and yes, i sir. think uh, we should pay attention to this more so because uh, the society as such is becoming a uh, unit oriented uh, society where families uh, they are working far away Yes, and uh, parents are at home in the geriatric mm-hmm. age, and uh, nobody to care for them. Mm-hmm. This is increasing worldwide, especially and also in Manipur also. There are many people whose parents are here, and uh, their uh, children and wards are far away in far off countries, other countries yes. like US, UK, uh, South uh, uh, South Korea, and Japan, and other things. And uh, their parents are here, getting old. Yes, sir. so geriatric care is required, and then palliative care team. if we have a good system of palliative care which can take care of them uh, both at the geriatric level and as a, uh, as they progress with uh, their problems with the palliative care then it will be very nice yes sir uh, people whoever yes, sir. it is there they will get uh, care uh, yes, in their life uh, because some of them those who are geriatric now they have really faced the uh, uh, very difficult hurdles of life and yes, they have work very hard they have suffered a lot and toiled to make their own life a success as well as the next generation their children they have worked so that their children do not face many problems in of hardships in life and at that time the children leave them because of their profession not because they do want to leave but because of profession and because of uh, uh, their choices of uh, uh, their life they leave them and uh, then uh, they have to uh, suffer a lot so there also i think uh, 
uh, both this geriatric as well as uh, palliative care medicine at the society level, not not at individual level, but at society level, if we can develop systems where care is taken, I think that will be excellent. Yes, sir. for all of us. Uh, I think. Yes, Very good question. Next, any comment? Yeah. So, uh, so, w w what are the different types of emotions that you come across when patients uh, they are facing death? You know? so wh yes, what is the common uh, phrase uh, commonly when they say when they come to know about death? So, is it uh, like refusal mostly, first? Yes, sir. Or, so, what happens yeah. is that uh, so whenever someone uh, gets diagnosed with uh, something, they don't expect. Let's take an example, sir. Uh, a female gets lung cancer. That is quite. Uh, I mean, uh, they they would never expect this thing. Yeah. Female getting lung cancer because there are many people who smoke cigarette. So females they will be usually don't smoke. Yeah. They, people they don't, don't smoke, sir. So when they get lung cancer, they die diagnosed with lung cancer. The first thing they will they will they will straight away they will deny. It. So the emotion that they go through first is denial. And then what happens is that uh, they will get angry. Okay, angry. Yeah. Angry. After that, they will start getting very angry and then they will start bargaining that, no, no, I don't have this, I don't have this, uh, uh, this kind of uh, things. And then uh, they will, they'll slowly they will start accepting, sir. Mm -hmm. In a phase-wise manner, they will start accepting. But, uh, so these kind of emotions are very difficult to uh, uh, like deal with. Mm. Suppose uh, the patient, uh, I, have, uh, I, have, I have dealt with this kind of patient, sir, uh, uh, that fem the, uh, the female who got uh, lung cancer, because there now, nowadays the incidence of uh, lung cancer, even in female, is increasing, sir, because of genetic reasons. Yeah. So we need to have the facts and data regarding uh, the reason for lung cancer in female. Mm. So when we have the facts and data and uh, all these things, so, and when we try to explain the uh, patient that uh, this can happen in uh, female as well and they slowly start accepting and uh, they, uh, their emotions are uh, taken care of. So. Right. Yeah, so and uh, I must inform the viewers that uh, uh, Dr. Nandan Chaudhary is also associated with the Palliative Care Society in Fall, yes, which uh, arranges uh, programs to uh, visit uh, patients at home who are bedridden or going to die near death and uh, Dr. Nandan also visits uh, patients uh, in their homes and uh, gives care. So this is another information I and this is done totally free of cost. Uh, Palliative Care Society Imphal is uh, doing it free of cost to the patient in, around, in and around Imphal and the health department is trying to do this care in the other districts through the uh, uh, services of the CHO in the health and wellness centers. So this is an information I wanted to pass uh, to all the viewers that we are trying to spread the uh, care of this level to all other areas. And uh, uh, so like when the patient is uh, in the transition phase from living to death and then just after that Suppose if you are in that moment of time uh, with the patient and family at that time, what are your activities there? Uh, you like to know. during when, sir? Uh, like patient is going to die. You know that you are, he is in the death bed. Maybe within five ten minutes he is going to yes, die. Yes. You are there and uh, uh, you are taking care of the patient and the patient dies in front yes, of you. Yes, and then you are there uh, after yes, even after that. So. Yes, so, what is your reaction and how do you uh, take uh, uh, control of the situation? Because it is going to be yes, really sir. emotional and very, it is going to be yes, very sir. much charged. Yes, so, sir. that's what my uh, listening. Because if yes, any healthcare worker is listening, I would like to uh, listen, them yes, to listen sir. to you as to how best to react and then respond yes, in that situation. Because it's going to be very tough. Yes, sir. It's very tough. Yeah. And it's very tough also, sir. And it's very uh, exhausting for us also, emotionally. Yes. Because Sir, I have seen a lot of death in front of me. Yeah. I have seen very small child, I mean, suffering from cancer, dying in front of me. Yeah. And I feel, I feel emotionally, sir, very exhausted. Yeah. This is a very 
I mean, emotionally very exhausting for me also, even for caregiver also. Yes. Because I have been, I have been caring uh, for the patient since long time. Because cancer is not a some kind of uh, fever or something that we give paracetamol and it gets okay in one week. It's a long journey. Sir. So I get attached with some patient because I, I have been dealing with them, I have been talking to them every day. So I get attached, sir. And seeing them die, sir, it, it hurts me also. It hurts me a lot, sir. And uh, there is so much of emotional uh, trauma going on. And sometimes, sir, I have seen some uh, mother or father of the patient. They tell me that, sir, do something. And I know that I can't do something. I, 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 know I don't have any option to do something for the patient. So it's a very difficult situation. Mm. So in this kind of situation, I think uh, even if you are there, sir, that makes a lot of difference. Yes, okay. Even if you are there mm -hmm. and you are touching them, just a small touch and small presence also makes a lot of difference. Sir. Being with them, okay. talking to them, yeah. that makes a lot of difference, sir. I think. Okay. And once the patient, uh, something happens, I mean, the patient is dead, dead and uh, there, there are caregivers there. So, this is just for the uh, uh, healthcare professionals who are listening. Uh, they can uh, tell the caregivers that uh, that the, uh, the caregivers have done everything possible to help the patient throughout their life. Mm. And uh, there was everything done from our side also. And we did our best to help the patient, whatever was best for them. And also, uh, the caregivers, they did their best. They have done everything possible to take care of the patient. So that they'll feel good that they have done everything for the patient. Mm. What happens is that, sir, they feel that uh, they are not feeding well to the patient. Yes, they yes. have not taken care of the patient. So that kind of thinking is there, sir. Yes. So if, if you tell remorse them that... and guilt and... Uh, yes, sir, emotion and guilt and... Have we done the right thing? And yes, sir. Whether we have that kind of thought is there, sir, in, yes. in the mind. So once you tell them that everything was done perfectly, everything was done in the best interest of the patient, Mm. then I think uh, they will feel good, sir. Right. right. Yes, sir. And another concept, uh, as uh, doctors, uh, we are made to feel that uh, if uh, death happens to our patient, then it is a failure. Yes, sir. We have failed in the uh, treatment yes, or we have failed in the thing. And most of the doctors, they don't want to face this. So they yes, said sir. to go home and take the patient yes, home sir. like that. So what do you think uh, should be done to change this concept? Because it is not only for the doctors and healthcare workers, it's for the public also. Yes, they, when, once they come to the hospital, they think that, that they should come out of it alive. And yes, they have that concept. And if anything uh, otherwise happens, then they feel that there's, there's, uh, the treatment was wrong or the, yes, the, 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 the problems, uh, the, uh, the right things was not done or it was delayed or whatever. So yes, they uh, create a lot of uh, issues there. Yes, so. The doctors themselves, they don't want to face the situation. The pa yes, patient and the families, they don't uh, uh, accept the thing that once they have come to the hospital, why did he die? This is yes. a very common question. That's why I'm asking you. Yes, sir. How do you uh, feel that? Sir, I think uh, what we are lacking is, the most important thing is communication. Sir. I think there is some kind of, uh, what happens is that someone who is coming to hospital, sometimes we are very busy. Sir. As a doctor or the healthcare professional, we get very busy uh, in managing a lot of patients. Sometimes we forget to talk, sir. We forget to explain what is the condition of the patient. And uh, I think we have to make a habit to keep explaining them every time, sir. Keep explaining what is happening to the patient. How much time do I have? What is the uh, present condition of the patient? What can happen tomorrow or day after tomorrow? We don't know, but still we can tell them that this is the condition of the patient. This is not going to cure. Or this is these are the only options that we have. Right. So that the patient have the idea that the, pay, the, the doctor is doing the best that they, are, they can. Right. Suppose you don't tell them anything. What will happen? They will think that no doctor are doing the best and the patient will be cured. And suppose the patient is not cured. Not cured. Then they will think that they didn't their, did their best. But if you tell them that uh, we are doing uh, this, we are doing that, and uh, this is the condition of the patient, these are the things that is happening to the patient, now this will happen, this will happen like that, then they will understand. And they will, uh, they will trust you sir you have to build a, a good uh, patient and uh, like doctor uh, trust trust, yeah. trust is very important sir. trust between them yeah. yes sir so in this way i think the most important thing is communication sir right. explaining every time even if the news is bad also sir you have to explain and the right time also right. yes sir very true 
And uh, I would like to inform the viewers that uh, Dr. Nandan Chaudhary, as a part of our WHO program, is uh, coordinate, coordinating clinical discussion among Southeast Asian countries uh, where he is uh, arranging case presentation of palliative care patients uh, from different countries and he is uh, taking up these cases from different countries, making them present and for, for a discussion once every month. This is happening now. And uh, which are the countries and other things? Please just uh, discuss this. So this is a clinical forum, sir, where we... Uh, so the main idea is that, sir, uh, we try to learn what other countries are doing right. in terms of palliative care. Yeah. So each uh, country are given opportunity to present an interesting case. Yes. And uh, we try to discuss what can be done in, the, in this kind of patient. So yes. suppose, uh, sir, we, uh, the countries that we are uh, right now involved is uh, India. We have two centers right now from India. Yes. And uh, we have Bangladesh. Yes. We have the Bangladesh, we have uh, Myanmar, yes. we have Bhutan, Bhutan right now and we are uh, will be including Nepal also and other Southeast Asian countries sir. Okay. So this has started only uh, two months back sir. Yes. So slowly we will be including many countries sir right. and many centers from India also. Right. So in this uh, sir we try to discuss uh, about some interesting case and uh, we see uh, what that country did to help this patient and what better we could have done. Yes. Yes. Just to uh, uh, learn from the uh, from other countries. Sometimes uh, other countries might be doing something very interesting yes. that we might not be doing. Yes. So we get to learn in this forum. Okay. Yes, sir. Very so nice. very every, yes, sir. Everyone give this give their yeah. opinions. I can understand because uh, Myanmar and uh, Bhutan are very strongly Buddhist oriented uh, yes, uh, societies, and mm. for them they have their own system of end of life care and. Yes, this is in the Buddhist practice, life practice of life experience. Yes, so they have that already ingrained in their yes. system and society. So I think uh, that's a good uh, thing. And uh, uh, congratulations to you for yes. being able to coordinate this uh, program and taking it forward uh, from here in Manipur. So uh, thank you for that as well. Yes. Is there any more comment or question? Otherwise, uh, we can end the discussion for today. Yes. No, so I think... Uh, uh, we have had a very fruitful discussion. This is just the beginning. We have just started about just mentioning about uh, death and then end of life care. We need to go a long way to yes, really sir. make it uh, uh, be understood to the public and they should uh, be aware of this topic and discussion so that it comes easily to them. They can yes, understand this and anybody who needs palliative care uh, they should be able to get it at least uh, yes. now in Manipur. So any viewer who wishes and expects palliative care, they should uh, look where the service is available, near their house, uh, wherever they are, or in, in institutions where it is available and get palliative care and make the end of life less suffering, more dignified as human beings when we are coming to death. And I think that is something each one of us would want yes, and it would be a desire for all of us to die in that manner without suffering, without suffering pain, without suffering with all so many other problems yes, but die dignified, be very you know dignified in the presence of our family members also, yes. we'll be dignified so I think uh, very fruitful discussion, thank you so much for joining thank us you, and sir. sharing your thoughts and we hope that now since you are here we'll be able to take care of such time of life for all people in Manipur and hope that you will be able to uh, do programs for the awareness of people as well as uh, other doctors in and around uh, uh, Manipur. At least uh, Sijo Hospital is starting a medical college and students are coming, uh, probably next month students will be coming to join us and uh, we have an opportunity to train them in palliative care right from the beginning so that will be a good start uh, for them also. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you, Dr. Nandan. Thank you. Thank you, viewers. Any question, you can still post it in the chat box and Dr. Nandan can answer uh, any question in the chat box of the Facebook program itself. Thank you very much. Thank you.